conference play for Nebraska. One as they've won 23 consecutive conference openers. They have their hands full tonight in Kansas City as the number two ranked Huskers take on the Oklahoma State Cowboys. OSU is the home team. Over 25,000 have made their way from Stillwater. Nebraska, the visitors. Over 40,000 have come from Lincoln for this game, which has a bowl-like atmosphere and a sold-out Arrowhead Stadium. Hello again, everybody. I'm Ron Thulin. It has been a long time since the Oklahoma State Cowboys have beaten Nebraska. In fact, the last time it happened, Nebraska head coach Frank Solich was 17 years of age. OSU head coach Bob Simmons was 13. The year was 1961. My broadcast partner at that time, Artie Gigantino, was probably two or three years old. <laughs> probably. Artie, last week against uh, Washington, we saw a great Nebraska defense. But if Oklahoma State's going to win this game, they're going to have to run against that defense. Well, they've got two tailbacks in which to do it. Jamel Fobbs is number one, two. He's Mr. Outside. Nathan Simmons, number one. He's Mr. Inside. Last week against Mississippi State, they ran the ball 71 times. They've got to run the ball inside today against this fast, aggressive Nebraska defense. Well, Nebraska comes in riding an 18-game win streak. That is the exception rather than the rule. Why are they so good? For a lot of reasons. The number one thing is coaching consistency. They've always had the same scheme here at Nebraska. The second thing is they believe in the option offense. The third thing is that wonderful walk-on program. In fact, five walk-ons will start today. And also the development of the athletes through the weight program. It's probably the best in the United States. All of these things equal a great tradition at the University of Nebraska. Well, another great tradition is rushing the football and if Nebraska does that tonight they'll be behind big Josh Heskew 23 pancake blocks versus Cal a couple of weeks ago we'll step aside kickoff is straight ahead Hardy Gigantino Eric Clemens Ron Thulin coming your way from Arrowhead Stadium and it is some kind of night a great night for college football and there has been a lot of rain in the Kansas City area the last couple of days. Eric Clemens, the third member of our broadcast team, is on the sideline. Eric, what's the feel like? Okay, guys, there has been some concern about the playing surface, the grass surface here at Arrowhead Stadium. The Chargers and Chiefs played an NFL game here in the rain a few weeks ago. It was a lot of mud. They chunked up the field pretty good. But a few moments ago, I talked to head groundskeeper Andre Bruce. He assured me that the field is fine if the rain holds off today. If it does not, there will be concern about the playing surface here at Arrowhead Stadium. Now, about three hours before the game, 100 pounds of seed was spread between the hash marks out here on the the field the players cleats believe it or not will be used to aerate the field and of course for Frank Solich the faster the surface the better with the great speed he has on both sides of the football we'll keep an eye on the field for you throughout the game guys all right thanks very much Eric Artie how about the scouting report for the Huskers well the first thing they've got to do is contain Tony Lindsay that's running and passing they've got to block the multiple fronts of Oklahoma State they got to throw the ball deep to test that Oklahoma State secondary and they've got to dominate the kicking game because I think they have an edge in the kicking game and on the, on the excuse me Ron on the other side Oklahoma State has got to run the ball inside the tackles. They've got to avoid negative plays on offense, but yet on defense, they've got to force negative plays, minus yardage plays. And they cannot get discouraged if they fall behind because that's what Nebraska wants you to do. And that's when that big tidal wave takes over is when they get ahead of you. Well, it is a perfect night, overcast skies, rain is not expected, temperatures will be about the mid-50s as Chris Brown set to kick it away, and we are underway, Oklahoma State won the toss and will receive Jamal Fobbs, seven yards deep, is going to sit out on it, and Oklahoma State will take over first and ten from their own 20. An explosive offense led by last year's Big 12 Freshman of the Year and number one in pass efficiency last season, Tony Lindsey. But what makes him so dangerous is running the football. Nebraska is concerned about that. The line is big for Oklahoma State. They are led by David Camacho at left tackle. Call him the Mountain Man. 6'7", 300 pounds. And at wide receiver, Willie Grissom. He's a senior. He's talented. Coaches are looking for him to really break out this evening. Oklahoma State first and 10 from their own 20-yard line. High formation with Hafferty and Fobbs. Hafferty just over the left side does not pick up a whole lot as we take a look at that big time Nebraska defense that had such a great game against Washington. Number four against the rush in the NCAA averaging just about 60 a game opponents do. The line's led by Chad Kelsey. He was the Big 12 defensive player of the week. And linebacker Brian Shaw, former walk-on. He teams with Jay Foreman to have a solid linebacking court in the secondary. Clint Finley 
or Ralph Brown, we should say, at quarterback. From the tailback spot, not much running room again. You know, it's interesting because the first two plays of the game so far, Oklahoma State has had three tight ends in the game. They lined up in an unbalanced line and ran the ball between the tackles at Nebraska. Bob Simmons told us yesterday that's what he has to do. He's got to, in coach speak, Ron, you've got to pound the ball inside, and they're so far doing that. This is the exact situation that Oklahoma State likes. Third and short. They want to stay on schedule. It is Simmons over the left side. He gets the first down. Moving the chains. And, Artie, when you look at the numbers for Oklahoma State, the thing that stands out, I think, is ball control. Well, it's ball control because they're plus nine this year in terms of time possession. But the other thing that stands out to me, Nebraska so far this year has had no one line up and try to really run it at them. Well, we saw Washington last week tried to throw the football. That was unsuccessful. Made little attempt to try to run it. With the fullback. And again, it is Halferty. They will alternate three at the fullback spot, the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Well, a couple of games that you saw here on Fox Sports Net. First of all, Tulane has defeated Jeff Bauer's Southern Miss Golden Eagles. The final in that game, 21-7. We hope you saw that. And earlier today, it was Navy. Losing to number 16, West Virginia, 45-24. The Middies had the lead in that ball game early on. Second and eight for Oklahoma State. Ball on the 39-yard line. The coach's son, Nate Simmons, slashes his way, and again, it'll be third down and short. First hit was made by Chad Kelsey. Now, what you're going to see, you see they got four guys lined up on this side of the line over here. It's an unbalanced line. Now, watch Simmons get the ball. He's going to take the ball. He's going to hit up inside. It's a fullback guard power play. All Oklahoma State is trying to do there is get more men at the point of attack. But what you do when you have an unbalanced line, you really spread out, at least across the line of scrimmage, this Nebraska front. Well, it's not going to be third down and short. It'll be first down and 10 for the Oklahoma State Cowboys. In that offensive line of Oklahoma State, you look at Camacho and George Arceo, the big right guard. These JUCO transfers have stepped up for Bob Simmons. Yeah, and they're, like you said at the beginning, they're all big guys, and I think they've got a huge height advantage on this Nebraska front, linebackers and down linemen. It is noisy here at Arrowhead Stadium, something Oklahoma State worked on in practice this week. Lindsay will put it up for the first time, and it is incomplete. Intended for Marcellus Rivers, number 85, the redshirt freshman out of Douglas High School in Oklahoma City. The same high school of Alonzo Mays High School, and also the same number Alonzo Mays had when he played at Oklahoma State. And you know what else? He was recruited as much as Alonzo Mays. This is a play-action pass with Lindsey going on the corner. I think it's a good move because what you want to do, you want to send a message to Nebraska's defense, we're not just going to run this thing on first down. We might throw it a little bit too. No touchdowns for Lindsey throwing the football yet this year. A couple of interceptions. Terrence Richardson, number three, has checked into the lineup for the Cowboys, and he is in motion. From the eye formation, quick drop it is Richardson. Up to about the 50-yard line before Irwin Sweeney runs him out of bounds. But once again, the Oklahoma State Cowboys showing some ball control. Good pickup. That was their normal personnel. Two wide receivers in the game and two backs. That was a quick hitch screen outside to Richardson. They ran this play very successfully last week against Mississippi State. It's a high percentage pass. Look for them to run it a great deal again tonight. Third down. We'll call it six. And the 40-plus Nebraska fans are standing, and now the Oklahoma State fans stand. Lindsey, pressure, drop, incomplete. Great pressure again by that Nebraska defense that was so disruptive against Washington. Tony Ortiz, number 37, is the one who put the pressure on Lindsey. And Oklahoma State doesn't want to be in these situations. They don't want to be in third and long because that is exactly what Nebraska is going to do. They're going to pressure them if it's third and long. Ortiz is a fabulous athlete, and Ron, when he blitzes, he really comes hard. 
Fourth down and six. Ball on the 48 yard line. Scott Elder set to kick it away for Oklahoma State. A low kick. Joe Walker is going to let it bounce. And we get our first look at that Nebraska offense, number two in the NCAA in rushing, and they are led by Bobby Newcomb, returned last week after sitting out two weeks with that knee problem, coming off a career-best 79 yards rushing and three touchdowns in five of eight passing against Washington. Their line is a good one. Ben Guestford, the former walk-on at right guard, he opens holes, and a lot of the coaches say he will be the key tonight. And Joel McAvicka, Oklahoma State, says they have to stop the fullback in order to be successful. Kavika and D'Angelo Evans. We weren't sure if he was going to start, and he will. And he has the football. Pick it up where he left off at Washington. Trent Alexander and J.B. Flowers make the stop for the Oklahoma State defense. That allows just about 105 yards rushing a game. They want a physical football game, and they're going to get it tonight. The veteran line is led by Courtney Mallory, the junior. He anchors the DL. Linebacker, keep an eye on Kenyatta Wright. He is very active right in the middle. Nebraska is keying on him. And in the secondary, Ricky Thompson banged up just a little bit. But Rex Ryan says they have to count on him. Makovic are right up the middle. When you look at this Nebraska offense, you have to start from the inside out. You stop the fullback, you control the quarterback, and you rally to the pitch man. Last week, Washington did a wonderful job of stopping the fullback inside, but they didn't have enough people to get to the quarterback and the pitch. Well, D'Angelo Evans made quite a comeback last week. 13 carries, 146 yards rushing, three touchdowns. Shevin Wiggins in motion. Great defense by Oklahoma State. Alton Weaver from that defensive tackle spot, the senior out of Houston, Texas. He started to disrupt things early on. One of the looks now that Oklahoma State gives you, you see number 95 stunt inside and hit McAvicka in the backfield perfectly. They give you not only a lot of fronts, but they give you a lot of stunts. There's a lot of pressure on the Nebraska offensive line tonight to pick all the stuff up. Second down and 12, a loss of two. Sometimes Oklahoma State just flat out up bans you. The fullback. Up the middle, pickup of about four on the play before Courtney Mallory brings him down, the junior out of Detroit, Michigan. You know, we talk about the defensive coordinator, Rob Ryan, in his second year. His brother Rex is the D coordinator down in Oklahoma. Of course, Buddy Ryan, a 46 defense, but you won't see the 46 defense a lot during against option teams, Artie. Well, it's hard because the, uh, the 46 defense is meant to stop the forward pass and the power running game. Third down and seven from the 29. Newcomb trying to make lemonade out of lemons. And he will not get the first down. Trent Alexander, they call him Cowboy because he likes to do a little calf roping with the stop on Bobby Newcomb, and Nebraska will be forced to punt. Well, this is going to give Oklahoma State's defense a lot of confidence because what you want to try to do against Nebraska, and Coach Ryan was telling us this the other day, is get them off schedule, make it second and 12, make it third and seven, because Nebraska wants to stay on schedule, and to me, that's where they're the most dangerous. The number's on Bill LaFleur. Terrence Richardson set to receive the kick. High spiral, Richardson at about the 17. Right up the middle, lost the football. I think Oklahoma State may have gotten it back. And they have a 53-yard punt, and Oklahoma State will take over first and 10 from their own 24. And through it all, Daryl Strawberry has shown a great deal of class. And our best wishes are with Daryl and his family. Nathan Simmons, Jeremy Hafferty in the backfield for the Cowboys, first and ten. And Nate Simmons, who already graduated with a degree in psychology, that was a degree in big hits or tees on the stop. Hardy, let's take you. We talk about the. Well, first of all, we'll look at the replay. Jeremy Oaf at number 70 does a great job against Warren from Nebraska. He stands him up, keeps his legs moving, and takes him out of the play. This offensive line, and we're going to say it all night, has done a wonderful job so far this year for Oklahoma State. They talk about Oppen. Here's a guy who's played tackle. He's played guard. He's played every position on the offensive line. No gain on that last play. 
Stretching forward, Chad Kelsey wrapping up Nathan Simmons. Simmons coming off a career day versus Mississippi State a couple of weeks ago. 29 carries, over 145 yards. And he is Mr. Inside for the Cowboys. They want to hand the ball off to him inside. Fobbs is more Mr. Outside. To get the ball on the perimeter, they use Fobbs. To get the ball and run it inside, they give it to Nathan Simmons. Once again, third down for the Cowboys. Eye formation, one wide receiver to the right. Lindsey keeps it. Dumps it off, looking for the fullback, Hafferty incomplete. And that's the second time tonight they've looked to the fullback. They have not thrown any passes this year to the fullback position. They felt that they could keep Nebraska out of balance and keep them from keying on the tight ends and the tailbacks by throwing the ball to the fullback. The problem is, though, the fullback doesn't have a lot of practice catching right. passes, especially in game situations. Elder's first punt, 37 yards. That is Joe Walker, averaging just over nine yards of return on punts. And he's dangerous. It's a fake. And it could be a first down for the Cowboys, and it is. The pass was complete to Evan Howell, a former track guy. His twin brother also plays on the Cowboys. Howell, a transfer from Grambling. And Bob Simmons not going to leave anything in the chamber tonight. A pickup of 21 on the play. Well, if this is indeed a bowl atmosphere, to me, you play it like a bowl and you go for it. Now watch this. He gets the snap. Elder gets the snap. He throws out the Hal, who's wide open to the outside. Nebraska was playing off. Obviously, it was some type of audible that they determined prior to the game if Hal was not covered up. Ryan Aikens now the fullback for the Cowboys, and Jamal Fobbs also in the backfield, and everybody is moving. Last year against Missouri, we saw the Oklahoma State Cowboys use the old swing and gate play, and Bob Simmons says he doesn't mind using those kind of plays, and he likes to use them early at times. Talk about a momentum switcher. Well, what it does, it keeps the defense off balance. First down. You know, false starts have been a little bit of a problem so far this year for Oklahoma State. At Kansas, they had six. At Tulsa, the game that they lost, they had four. And last week against Mississippi State, they only had one. So I know Bob Simmons is not going to be happy to see that start up again. Well, Ron Calcagney, their offensive coordinator, said that's something they have worked on. But they still are averaging about 96 yards in penalties a game. And we've got another flag, and Nebraska is celebrating. But you know what, Ron? In practice, you never get the adrenaline or the emotion of a game. You know, I mentioned earlier, Artie, that, that the Oklahoma State Cowboys made it a point to tell us that they worked with noise. We know Nebraska does it on a, on a daily basis. But can you simulate 79,000 at an empty Lewis Field in Stillwater? No, you cannot. But it gives the players the idea that they have to concentrate in a noisy atmosphere. The worst thing about it, though, is the coaches get a headache during practice <laughs> because they have to listen to that noise. Well, now it's first down and 20. Willie Grissom on the right side, and Lindsey's going to put it up. Again, going to the fullback, and Aikens this time can't put the meat hooks on it. The senior out of Woodbridge, New Jersey. Does not have a reception this year, and Tony Lindsay seems to be maybe just a touch excited, overthrowing everybody. Well, what he's doing, he's trying to get out on the corner like the coaches have coached him to do. He's got a guard out in front of him. He's just got to ease up on those forward passes and get a little bit more of a touch. This is a guy, but remember, everybody forgets because he played so well a year exactly. ago. He is only a sophomore. He's a young man who's going to be a great player here in the Big 12. He played above everybody's expectations in 97, no question. Second down and 20. The option, bad pitch. Out of bounds, the Cowboys will have it, but push them back a little bit farther. It could be third down, and they may have to get to Junction City on this. Nebraska recruited Tony Lindsay because he played in high school like a Nebraska court. Now you're going to see him here go out on the corner on the option, but he pitches the ball and the ball goes behind the intended receiver. Excellent penetration, though, by about three Nebraska defenders. That option play had absolutely no chance. Jason Wiltz was up the field. Tony Ortiz was up the field. Good team defense again. About a third of the football field. Three wide receivers to the right. 
Lindsay trying to buy some time by sprinting out. Little bit of running room, but not 31 yards. And the Cowboys will once again be forced to punt, negating that great fake punt that got him the first down. Ron, when you get penalties on first down, it takes you out of your game plan. Bob Simmons wanted to run the ball inside on first down, but when you get false starts and now it's first and 15, yep. you have to open it up a little bit more and throw. I know that's not what Bob Simmons, the coaching staff from Oklahoma State, had in mind this evening. Now Elder has to punt away from his 15-yard line, and once again, Walker is back for Nebraska. Good snap, left-footed kicker, a low wobbly kick. Walker can return it from the 25. Up to about the 36-yard line, a 45-yard kick, nine yards on the return. And that's where Nebraska will take over, first and 10. In downtown Kansas City this weekend, we happened to stop by for just a few minutes. And boy, was that stuff oh, so good, oh, it smelled good, and mm -hmm. Come to Kansas City, got to eat beef. Newcomb in first and ten. Gives it to the fullback, McAvicka, and Oklahoma State doing exactly what they wanted to, stop the fullback. Good technique inside by the defensive tackles from Oklahoma State. John McAvicka, who's one of the best fullbacks in the country, had nowhere to run. What's happening a little bit is the Oklahoma State defenders are getting into the Nebraska offensive line before they can get going on their blocks. You mentioned a great word, technique, and I want to talk about that at the next play of the uh, defensive line for Oklahoma State. Second and 10, Newcomb's going to put it up. He's going to have to scramble, and a bunch of orange jerseys will drop him at the 25-yard line. Raymond Cato had the first hit coming from that strong side linebacker spot. Kenyatta Wright also in, and Pistol Pete likes it. Well, the strength of Oklahoma State is their linebackers, not only against the run, but blitzing. Now, Cato's a guy who sat out last year. He was suspended. He was the leading tackler on the team in 1996. He's a big old guy. He weighs 240 pounds. He's had a shoulder bruise, but they think he is going to be, this year, a great football player. Wholesale changes for Oklahoma State on defense. Newcomb swings it out, intended for D'Angelo Evans, incomplete. Going back to that technique, Rob Ryan said, our front guys have got to have great technique. Well, that's a coach speak thing. We coaches always talk about technique, but I'll tell you what I'm seeing tonight here, Ron. I'm seeing great emotion by Oklahoma State and guys on defense flying around. And right now they've got Nebraska, and I know it's still early, a little bit out of rhythm with their defense against Nebraska's offense. LaFleur's first punt carried 51 yards. Terrence Richardson standing at his own 31-yard line. Good snap, wobbly kick. Richardson's going to watch this one bounce. He should get out of the way. 43 yards on the punt, and we'll step aside. We are scoreless from Kansas City. Stadium in Kansas City, Missouri to watch the number two ranked Nebraska Cornhuskers and the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Oklahoma State gaining confidence. Eric Clemens is right by their bench. All right, guys, the last time the Oklahoma State offensive linemen and coaches very upset at themselves with those couple of miscues that really killed the momentum after that fake punt play. Adam Davis, the offensive guard, said, hey, we're better than these guys. Let's see. Nathan Simmons barreling his way up over the 40-yard line as Oklahoma State went to three tight ends in that formation. That's what they did at the beginning of the game. You better believe they're going to come back and do it. See, you got four guys lined up over here. It's his zone play to Simmons. He takes the ball. What a great job by the offensive line. But that's also violent running there by number one, Nathan Simmons, as he knocks down Walker from Nebraska. Simmons again. It'll be close to a first down as Oklahoma State trying to snap a 22-game win streak by the Nebraska Cornhuskers. You know, for Oklahoma State tonight, this has got to be like a fight. You know, like a dog fight in those pits. And they just got to line up and run it at Nebraska like they said they wanted to do. And that's the best thing you can do when you're trying to give your offensive lineman confidence is say, hey, we're going to line up and just pound the football inside at you. It was good enough for a first down for the Cowboys. The fullback Akins. 
picks up maybe two on the play. And one thing I think that's standing out offensively for Oklahoma State is something that they had worked on is trying to keep their offense simple, but yet a couple of little twists. A little twist because what they felt they did against Tulsa, they lost that game, they got behind 35-0, they overloaded Tony Lindsay. So they're going to hand the ball off these big backs, big fullbacks like Brian Aikens here tonight and try to pound it inside. But the other thing they're doing, they're chewing up this clock and keeping that brilliant Nebraska offense off the field. They average holding the ball nine minutes more than their opponent. Three tight ends, Lindsey running for his life. Drops the football, it is loose. Let's see who the officials say has it. And it'll belong to Oklahoma State. Aaron Sweeney was in on it. Chad Kelsey was in on it. That is the swarming defense that we saw stifle Washington last week. And one of the reasons they stifled Washington is because of that guy, number 57, Chad Kelsey. Now watch him right here. He lines up. He's a defensive end. This guy plays 100 miles an hour. He goes to contain Lindsey. Lindsey gets away from him. But watch him now. He's going to recover and go chase it down. How about Kelsey last week? Three tackles, a pass broken up, an interception, a sack, and forced to fumble. You know, I Oklahoma like State him. has four seconds to snap, but they may get a delay of game here. And Nathan Simmons took a look at the clock and called the timeout. They almost would have had another offensive penalty. Well, they had a long, took too long making a decision. But going back to Kelsey, you know why you like a guy like that? Because he's the best example for young football players out there to watch because he plays so hard. control that's exactly what they're getting just inside of three minutes we are scoreless in the first with Nebraska and Oklahoma State from Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City it is Simmons up the middle first down Cowboys their fifth of the ball game Nebraska has only one Nebraska was playing nickel that time they anticipated a pass Oklahoma State threw him a curve and handed the ball off on a draw play to Nathan Simmons you're going to see Tony Lindsay drop back. It's a little lead draw. Simmons gets it. There's a big hole up front because the Nebraska defensive linemen are rushing the passer. When you do that, you create seams. Pickup of 11. Aikens, the fullback, picks up five. We'll step aside. Let's send it back to our college football Saturday studios with Kevin Frazier. Hat I'm going to wear this week, my Yankee hat or my Cleveland hat? I'm going to have my Indians hat on, big guy. Aikens barrels his way inside the 40. Chad Kelsey coming around to try to make the stop. Tony Lindsay, though, we mentioned it earlier how he exceeded expectations last year. Here's a young man that grew up in the backyard of Colorado. Colorado did not even recruit him. He said he dreamed of being the Darian Hagen or the Eric Bieniemy. Almost signed with Nebraska. But he made a commitment to Oklahoma State, and he stuck with the commitment when Nebraska came in and tried to change his mind. You've got to like this young man. Third down and four. Simmons hopscotching his way, claws his way up to about the 35 before middle linebacker Jay Foreman makes the stop, and that should be good enough for yet another Cowboy first down. When we studied film this week, we noticed a great tendency from Oklahoma State to run the football behind the left side of the offensive line. When I asked Coach Simmons about it, he said, because those guys just do a great job. Well, Artie, they're going to come out and miss this, but from where they spotted it, where the chains were on the far side, it should be good enough for another first. Ooh, that's a lot closer than I thought it was, but they're going to give it to him. Talk about that left side of the line of Camacho and Davis. Well, two big guys, one's 275, one's 300, and they just make room for Simmons and any back that's got the football. Doing a wonderful job of staying on blocks. It's not if you just block a guy, it's if you finish him. And right now, that offensive line from Oklahoma State is finishing their blocks. Oklahoma well, State just doing it with straight ahead. Not much option. Simmons, big hole up the middle. Inside the 30 down to the 29-yard line. Another Cowboy first down. This is old-fashioned football with a unbalanced line. Now watch Jay Foreman, number 44. He sees the play. He steps up. But big old number 75, David Camacho, gets on him and works him out of the play. You'll see it again now. See Foreman in the middle here. He sees it. 
He steps up, but Camacho just turns him. Boy, is that perfect oh, timing boy. on a block. Simmons 36 yards already on this drive, and he's going to add to it. Tries to get up to the 20-yard line and into the red zone. You know, we talked about this at the beginning. No one this year has dared or tried or was brave enough, so to uh -huh. speak, to do this against Nebraska. Line up in an unbalanced line and run it right at them and pound them. And the Oklahoma State coaches felt good that they could do it with their offensive line. And that statistic there, 61 yards in the first quarter against Nebraska, really bears it out. 40 of those on this drive. Simmons trying to get away from a couple of tackles on second and six. May have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. The Oklahoma State running backs, one thing they wanted to improve from last year to this year is making yardage after the initial hit. Jamal Fobb said it. Nathan Simmons said it. It's called yak, Ron. Yards after contact. You know, we have a dink and a donk and a rack. Well, it's called yak. Yards after contact. And I'll tell you, that's the mark of a good back. Well, the first quarter will come to an end. Bob Simmons doing exactly what he had hoped for. We've got a dandy from Kansas City. We're scoreless. Eight seconds to 422 for Nebraska. That, my friends, is ball control, but this is the biggest play of the drive. Third down and eight, ball on the Nebraska 23-yard line. Lindsey keeps it stuffed. The black shirts of Nebraska led by Joe Walker from that rover spot. Mike Rucker also in on it. Big Mike Rucker, been slowed down by a groin this year. But boy, is he a good football player. Watch him come off the corner. He starts to get blocked. He sheds the guy inside, and he comes out and makes the play. That's why, if he's healthy, he's an All-American football player for this Nebraska defense. Charlie McBride's defense comes up with the big play when necessary. And Tim Sidness will be in to attempt the field goal. They're spotting it at the 27-yard line, a 37-yarder. Chris Holupka, a quarterback, is the holder. Aluka did a great job just getting that ball down, and it is good. What a job by Chris Aluka, the backup quarterback for Tony Lindsay, just to get that snap and get it down. And Oklahoma State has struck first. They lead it 3 0. Three nothing lead, Artie. Well, it's a, it shows you the importance of the holder. Now, watch Halupka feel this snap that goes to his right. Those are the little things that help you win football games. Because if a quarterback is the holder, he's got the good hands. He doesn't have as good a hands as guys that are wide receivers. But that's an example of why you want your quarterback to be your holder. Oklahoma State kicking it away. It'll be Joe Walker, number eight in the NCAA, and kickoff returns. And that is why slips and falls as he crosses the 20. Let's step aside for a Dr. Pepper game break. Go to our College Football Saturday studio with Kevin Frazier. Thanks a lot, Ron. This is a huge SEC game. Georgia LSU, Olandis Gary, the guy with the first name that's a last name, the last name that's a first name. He also has a two-yard touchdown. Georgia leads LSU 14-7. Let's go back to KC. And that's one of the toughest places in the country to play down in Death Valley at LSU. Oh boy, at a night game? Wild, oh boy. wild atmosphere. Down on the bayou. Newcomb keeps it, and he is surrounded again, this time by Kenyatta Wright, the junior out of Vianne, Oklahoma, who's known as a big hitter. Well, Nebraska's going to try to establish the option game now. They haven't been able to get it going in the first quarter. That time they lined up in a double slot formation and had Bobby Newcomb keep the ball. Frank Solich knows to make this offense go at Nebraska, the quarterback has got to be productive. Kenny Cheatham now wide to the right. I formation Huskers. On second and nine. Newcomb scrambles. Still looking to get it away, and he does. Pass is complete to Cheatham. 
That'll be good enough for a first down for Nebraska, only their second of the ball game. Shows you the agility and the mobility of Bobby Newcomb, but it was a good play by Kenny Cheatham of continuing within the pattern while the quarterback was scrambling around. Cheatham's a big guy. He's caught seven passes already this year, but he gets himself open. That's an excellent heads-up play by the big wide receiver from Phoenix. Pickup of 13 on the play, first and 10 from the 37. Low setback. Oklahoma State stacking them up. This is the number two rushing offense in the NCAA, averaging 303 per game. Missouri, believe it or not, of the Big 12, number one. When you play this style of defense like they do here at Oklahoma State, you've got about nine guys around the line of scrimmage. It's very hard to run against unless you get the ball outside. That was an example of it. The Angelo gets the ball up inside. Evans gets the ball up inside, and about five orange shirts hit him. Wiggins in the slot. Evans the lone setback. The option, Newcomb to Evans. Nice job hauling in the pitch. Oh, he stood up. Evan Howell, his brother already, or he had the fake punt. He made a big stop. Newcomb was hit by Terrell Knowles. the rushing game you can see what Nebraska is defensively and offensively and same for the Cowboys and so far tonight this game is not going to do justice to these Nebraska <laughs> no. stats but you know the game is not over yet obviously there's a long way to go in this game tonight pickup of three third down and seven a new quarterback it is Eric Crouch he runs the option with Evans Evans steps up does not get the first down but I think the story on that play is that Bobby Newcomb was not in. Bobby Newcomb has not been 100% this year. The coaches told us last night he was only 90%. This guy, Eric Crouch, can run and pass. His biggest problem is he's a redshirt freshman without a lot of experience. But I look and see maybe Bobby Newcomb is probably re-injured or doesn't feel good about his knee. Well, also, Crouch has a sore hamstring, so he's not feeling 100%. The third-team quarterback is Monte Cristo, a senior, who does have game experience. Terrence Richardson is going to let this one go away again. Nebraska will surround it inside the 15, down to about the 13. Oklahoma State will take over, first and 10. Was a good one on after our game. Arizona goes up to Seattle and plays the Huskies. And you know the Huskies yep. are not a bunch of happy campers <laughs> after what Nebraska did to them last week. Oklahoma State with their back to the goal line. Jamal Fobbs trying to get out of the hole. Up over the 15, up to the 16-yard line. One thing when you talk about opposing coaches and they mention Oklahoma State they talk about zone blocking an awful lot with the Cowboys explain zone blocking what zone blocking is is the linemen are territorial in other words they're going to take a step and block an area as opposed to a man if two guys come in that area they block them if nobody's in that area they go on to the next guy zone blocking makes it easier for offensive linemen to block and guys like Fobbs to follow them because they know exactly where the offensive linemen are going to be. And the numbers on Fobbs this year, averaging over four and a half yards a carry, along with his counterpart Nathan Simmons. And you know what? He's a coach's son also. His dad is the running back coach at Baylor. So you've got two tailbacks yep. here. Both of them are coach's sons. Well, we saw Baylor have a whale of a game last week oh, against boy. Colorado. Dave Roberts doing a great job down in Waco. Fobbs and Hafferty. Hafferty trying to get the first down. Almost up to the 25-yard line. He only needed to go to the 23. Now, I don't think Oklahoma State will go for it here because of field position. But a year ago, they were not shy about going oh. for it on fourth down. Another first down for Oklahoma State. This is no big secret what they do. They had 71 rushes versus Mississippi State. And, you know, we watched that video last night. They just pounded Mississippi State Nothing fancy up inside, and they rush for 360 yards against the Jackie Sherrill defense. That's quite an accomplishment. That was a coming out party for that offensive line. 
Richardson in motion. You can see Oklahoma State dominating on first down, and right as Lindsey released it, he was crushed. Eric Johnson from that linebacker spot. It is a reception, but boy, Tony Lindsey took a wallop. He took a wallop, but Johnson is one of the fastest linebackers to ever play at Nebraska. And when he blitzes and comes clean, in other words, no one blocks him, he is going to really del deliver a wallop on the quarterback. I think this guy, Eric Johnson, is one of the premier linebackers in the United States. He's certainly one of the fastest, and he hails out of Phoenix, Arizona. Loss of three, second and 13. A lot of jumping around, penalty flags are thrown. This might be Oklahoma State third procedure penalty. You know, Tony Lindsay's got to come to the line of scrimmage and just settle down a little bit. He's amped up, so to speak, for this game. He's just got to relax a little bit because it is noisy and it is a pro Nebraska crowd here. Dead ball, false start on the offense. It'll be a five yard penalty in the in second down. You see, the coaches from Oklahoma State don't want this. They don't want to be in second and 16s right. and second and 17s because Nebraska is going to tee off and probably blitz, which is why the last time on third and 15, they ran the draw and it was very successful. We'll see what Charlie McBride comes up with this time. Well, it's a second down, down 18. Howell wide to the left. Three wide receivers on the left side. Lindsey rolls, rifles the pass, short hopped and complete. Intended for Ethan Howe. Nebraska did not blitz, but they played man-to-man -man coverage. And Lindsey, I think, was expecting the blitz and just under short-armed the ball a little bit and underthrew his receiver. Charlie McBride, he knew that he might have his hands full today. Uh, you know, Charlie's one of the most honest coaches oh, in yeah. all of the country. You sit and talk to this guy, and he tells you exactly what's on his mind. He's open, he's honest, and on top of all that, he's one of the great coaches on defense in this country. Yeah, he said he was mellowing before this season. Yeah, no chance, that. no <laughs> chance. Third down and 18 for the Cowboys. A little shuttle pass to Fobbs. Trying to get back to the original line of scrimmage. Does pick up some yardage, but it will be well short of the first down. Jay Foreman wearing his dad's number, 44. Chuck Foreman, of course, makes the stop. And Oklahoma State will be forced to kick it away once again. Temperatures were probably in the low 50s. It is a perfect night for college football, and we've got a good battle going on. Scott Elder already. Just about 42 yards a kick on an average. Joe Walker once again back for Nebraska. Standing inside his 40 at about the 37-yard line. Spiraling line drive from the 32. It is Walker. Makes his way up to about the 42-yard line. And that's where Nebraska will take over. Let's send it back to Kevin Frazier in our college football. Season. And you know what's smart about what Mac Brown's doing when you got a great player like that? Just keep working him. Make him earn his scholarship. Oh, D'Angelo Evans, you're not going anywhere. Raymond Cato, the linebacker, makes the first pop. Out of Midwest City, Oklahoma, he was a running back in high school in 96. He was honorable mention all Big 12. He's playing pretty good for a guy with a bruised shoulder because he gets up the field. There's some great penetration by the defensive line, but it clears the way for Cato to come up after he reads it and make the play in the backfield. That is really superior linebacker play. Second and 12, loss of two. Wiggins and Cheatham wide to the right. Cheatham at the 48, quickly dropped after the reception. Evan Howell on the stop. The walk-on, he was a track guy from Monroe, Louisiana, but Rob Ryan says this guy can cover anyone in the Big 12. Yeah, and he went to Grambling for a year. Him and his twin brother went to Grambling, and then they transferred to Oklahoma State. Their dad said, hey, his da their dad, Dallas, played for the Saints and the Jets and encouraged them to transfer to Oklahoma State. And so far, it's been a great move for both twins. He also talked him into playing football, but coaches say he can't tell him apart. <laughs> Third down and three from the 48. Newcomb changing the play. They'll run the option. Evans, short of the first down. Ricky Thompson from the free safety spot. The senior out of Hubbard, Texas, made the stop. 
This is vintage defense and vintage offense of Nebraska. Now watch Ricky Thompson here get up into the alley. You're going to see the option start to the left. Bobby Newcomb's going to fake the ball inside. But watch Thompson here. He takes a perfect angle when the ball gets pitched, and he makes the play in the backfield. You don't draw that up on a chalkboard any better than the Oklahoma State just did that. Bill LaFleur. Set to kick it away once again. Terrence Richardson back to receive it. A high kick. Fair catch is being called for at the 10. 40 yard kick by LaFleur, and we'll step aside. 6.04 left to play in the first half, and the Oklahoma State Cowboys leading the number two team in the country. And we are inside Arrowhead Stadium. Oklahoma State, first and 10 from their own 10, leading 3 0. Not much running room. Ron Calcagni is the offensive coordinator for the Oklahoma State Cowboys, former Arkansas quarterback, and he said he likens this game to the old Orange Bowl game. When Oklahoma took on his Arkansas Razorbacks, Lou Holtz suspended these players. Arkansas about a three-touchdown underdog. They just kicked the Sooners all over Miami that I day. I remember that game. You know, Ron's got a background from the University of Houston and also the Canadian Football League. So some of these spread-out formations are from his background. Simmons over the right side, and we have a penalty flag thrown, and that could be holding against the Cowboys again. But what a hold by the offensive line for Nathan Simmons, and he just exploded over that right side. And, and that time, it was the right side. Boy, Oklahoma State's not going to have any toes left after shooting themselves in the foot so many times tonight. Eric Clemens, you're by the Nebraska sideline. What's their demeanor? Guys, obviously some concern over here on the Nebraska sideline. You see the offensive team, especially the linemen, huddling with their coach right now, trying to figure out a way to sustain something. Again, so far it's been a tough Oklahoma State defense. Let's see what they can figure out if their defense makes a stand here on this particular Oklahoma State possession. Guys? But, Artie, I tell you what, you and I have seen the Huskers an awful lot of times. It's not time to panic yet. No, no, this game has got a long way to go, but one of the things we talked about at the beginning of the program was the offensive line from Nebraska had to block these multiple moving fronts from Oklahoma State. And Frank Solich knows what to do. He'll make the adjustments at halftime. Well, after the penalty, it pushes it back to a second and 14 situation. And this time, the Nebraska defense led by Kelsey. Putting the big hit again. You know, you see a lot of emotion in this Nebraska defense. Now watch this. The ball gets up inside. Simmons sees it, but there's nowhere to go. It's like running against the side of a mountain. And guys like Kelsey that play full speed all the time, they're going to work their way somehow to get to the running back. That's just really good defensive play up front by every defensive lineman and linebacker from Nebraska. Simmons, the lone setback, a very dangerous third down play for the Cowboys, third and 13. Simmons dancing around, doing a nice job getting back to the original line of scrimmage, but once again, Chad Kelsey in on the play. Their defensive ends are more like linebackers, aren't they not? Well, that's when Nebraska changed defensive schemes about seven years ago. That's what they wanted faster, smaller defensive ends because they can chase guys like Nathan Simmons down because they have the speed to do it. Defensive football in the 90s, Ron, is speed. It's not necessarily power. It's speed. And Nebraska is as good an example of that of anybody in the United States. This is a fast defense. Standing on his own goal line, it is Elder. Low snap, able to field it. A line drive. Wiggins. Great field position for the Nebraska Cornhuskers, something they've been able to do the whole year. 38 yards on the kick, 12 on the return. And when we come back, the Huskers will have it in Oklahoma State territory. Complete passes. The second one batted down by Metcalf of Oklahoma State. This is third and 10. And Newcomb's pass is complete to Cheatham. They're saying he made the reception right in front of Oklahoma State, and that'll be good for a first down after a pickup of 11. But Nebraska, three straight pass plays. 
And that was a good example of the size and experience of Kenny Cheatham using his big six foot four, 210 pound frame of coming back for the football. Now let's hope he's all right there because Bobby Newcomb put the ball right on the money. Frank Solich wanting to see the condition of his senior out of Phoenix, Arizona. Cheatham has battled injuries his whole career. He's hoping for a big year this season. Three receptions, 32 yards so far tonight. Well, Nebraska's battled, battled injuries so far this year, Ron. They've had a bunch of guys hurt. D'Angelo Evans missed the first three games. Um, Bobby Newcomb's missed the game. Safety Clint Finley has missed the game. They've been bothered by the injury bug at the beginning of this 1998 season. But this guy right here, Frank Solich, has not panicked. He right. just keeps coaching and keeps moving. You got to coach the players that you have on the field. For the first time in 31 years, somebody other than Tom Osborne calling the offensive plays. It is Frank Solich. First and 10, Nebraska. The interior defense stopping Joel Makovica. Eric Clemens, how about recapping what we've seen so far? Well, what we've seen so far is exactly what State wants to do, and that's control the football with Nathan Simmons. He's got 14 carries, 67 yards. Nebraska hasn't been able to sustain anything just yet. And you look at the total yards, guys, Oklahoma State 116 and Nebraska's 36. I don't know if we've seen in recent memory Nebraska being handled like they've been handled so far in the first half. Boy, you hit that on the head. Newcomb, big tape on the right leg. He is going to be dumped. Alton Weaver got the penetration. Courtney Mallory with a sack, his first of the year. The 11th sack of the season for the Cowboys of Oklahoma State, and only the fifth allowed by Nebraska. Big old Mallory comes up the field, and what you're going to see is, again, excellent penetration by Oklahoma State, and Newcomb never has a chance to get it going. But the guy who made it happen was 95, Alton Weaver, because he forced him back inside to Mallory. This is a very physical front for Oklahoma State. And I'll tell you, when you watch the video at the beginning of the year against Tulsa and against Kansas, it didn't appear that way to me. That's but right. they were last week, and they certainly are tonight. Loss of 12, Newcomb, straight drop. Into the flat, complete to Davison, and he is dropped. Oklahoma State holding opponents to about 29% on third down. And they hold the Huskers again, and it'll be fourth in a bundle for Nebraska. When the defense plays good, it sets the tempo. This place right now is going wild for the Oklahoma State defense. Very similar to when the Chiefs play here, because the Chiefs play so good on defense, Arrowhead Stadium becomes absolutely a wild environment, but it's because of the tempo of the defense. Now well, Chris Brown was going to spot the ball at about the 37-yard line. Would have been about a 47-yard kick but they were short one player they got to get old Sheldon Jackson back out on the field so now they're going to get their 12 players on Oklahoma State will huddle it up on the near side and Chris Brown who's longest in his career is 46 he will be attempting a 47 yarder 111 left to play in the first half. The Oklahoma State Cowboys have gotten a field goal. They have controlled the tempo of the ball game. They have rushed the ball on the Cowboys. And Chris Brown, the all-time leading scorer in Nebraska history, took over Mike Rozier's top spot earlier this year. Well, you know, when the offense moves the ball so well, he gets a lot of PAT attempts, and he gets a lot of field goal attempts. Boy, he does have a lot of field goal attempts. He's hit 102 straight. Frankie London will be the holder. Now Oklahoma State standing around. Coming up at halftime, the Marriott Halftime Report. Kevin Frazier back in our studios, our college football Saturday studios with Kellen Winslow. Have highlights and scores, a Daryl Strawberry update. Plus, we'll tell you how Penn State and Ohio State ended up earlier today. Dominic Raiola is the snapper. Frankie London. Former quarterback, the holder. This is a big field goal attempt for Nebraska because if they can go into halftime tied at three and three, they might be able to generate some momentum when they come out here in the second half. You don't want to miss this one, though. 48 yards. Low snap. Kick. Does it have enough? Yes. 
Well, we saw Chris Haluka do a great job getting the ball down on the field goal. There we saw Frankie London make sure everything was copacetic for Mr. Brown. Well, Frankie London's an ex-quarterback also, but so much goes in to kicking PATs and field goals. Frankie London fields it, he gets it down, and Brown just knocks it through. Brown now three of five on the air, and that's a career high. And with 106 left to play in the ballgame, Frankie London and company help the Huskers tie up the Cowboys. Three to three. I don't think this is what either one of us expected, is it? Well, I'm not sure it's what anybody expected because you look at Nebraska, and when you think of Nebraska, you think of numbers on offense. Obviously, they've had a great tradition of running the football. This guy, Frank Solich, was the running back coach here for a long, long time. He had as much to do with the refinement of this offense as Tom Osborne did. But tonight, the numbers are not very staggering. No. In fact, the numbers tonight are very much like Nebraska usually gets in one drive. It'll be Fobbs White to receive the kick along with Willie Grissom. Boy, Nebraska had such great field position and only were able to garner seven yards on the drive, but they did get the field goal from that man. But you know those guys in orange have something to do with it, too. Ah, uh, slightly. Brown set to kick it away with 106 to play in the first half. Bob's inside the goal line, straight up the middle. Gets up to about the 17-yard line with 101 to play in the half. Well, next on College Football Saturday, it's a Pac-10 battle as number 14 Arizona and its quarterback combo faces off against Brock Heward and the number 20 Washington Huskies. Steve Fiziak, Tom Ramsey, and Paul Sunderland will call the action. Check your local listings as we send it out west after our ball game here at a sold-out Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City. What do you think about that two-quarterback system? You, you in favor of that? Against it. I just don't think, I've never seen it absolutely work. I know Steve Spurrier's trying it, but boy, I don't think you get the continuity. Aikens the fullback. Yeah, and I think Bob Simmons might be content. Just watch the clock tick down. And I think this is intelligent because the one thing Nebraska does well on defense is they blitz you and they put pressure on you when you're trying to pass. If you get into a situation here where you're trying to pass, you might get sacked, you might fumble the ball, yep. and you might give Nebraska a cheap, so to speak, touchdown here at the end of the half. So I don't think Oklahoma State's going to do anything radical. I think they're going to hand the ball off and just kill the clock and go in at halftime with the score tied at three to three. This just might be the last play of the first half. The Nebraska black shirts wearing the white. Stacking up the coach's son. Mike Brown leads the charge and the clock will tick away. What a first half. Oklahoma State came into the game saying we will run the ball right at the Huskers. We want to control the clock. They have done just that. And as the clock ticks away, the Cowboys are going to be very satisfied with what they see before 79,000 here at Arrowhead. We're even up at halftime, three to three. Chris Salupka did a great job of getting the ball down on their field goal attempt by Tim Sidness. We saw Frankie London do it for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. And Bob Simmons is with Eric Clemens right now. All right, Coach. Well, you wanted to run the ball right at him. You did it. You're well, tied at halftime. What are you going to tell your team? Well, what we got to do is come back out the second half and do the same thing. Our defense is actually playing good. We got to come back out, get more first downs. We have to get our play action passes going, and then let's find out what happens. Okay, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Three to three at the half. Surprise, surprise. Oklahoma State hanging right in here with Nebraska. Let's go to our Fox College Football Saturday studios for the Marriott Half time report Kevin Frazier and Kellen Winslow guys thanks a lot Eric it also says Oklahoma State's defense is giving them some area off the corners they have to be able to take advantage of it guys all right Eric the first time that Bob Simmons coach for the Oklahoma State Cowboys he lost to the Nebraska court Huster 64 21 it's been a different story tonight and Frank Solich has been in this battle before. And that's what you do, though. If they're really bottling you up inside, you try to get the ball on the perimeter with either the quarterback or the pitch back. Look for that to happen here in the second half with the Nebraska offense. Walker from about the seven. Gets hit as he nears the 24-yard line. And, Hardy, we just can't talk enough about that Oklahoma State defense. 
Well, they've done it all right so far here in the first half. They've stopped everything Nebraska's tried. Up inside, they rallied around D'Angelo Evans. If they started an option, they're swarming the option. Cornerbacks coming up, making great plays like Hal does here. Either side, left or right. This is a swarming group of guys today on that Oklahoma State Cowboy defense. Evans and McAvicka in the backfield. Nebraska averaging just about 1.9 every play Newcomb swarmed under again Bobby Newcomb in the first half did not do a good job rushing the football four for minus 18 yards and Ron that was a perfect example Alton Weaver comes up the field for Nebraska to only have four yards rushing in a half of football is unheard of but what also is happening as we've talked about and will continue to talk about is the great job the front guys from Oklahoma State are doing tonight against the front guys the offensive line of Nebraska. They average over 300 yards running the football. Davison in motion. Newcomb pressure trying to get away uses his speed has some running room. First down the Cornhuskers as Newcomb scampers out of bounds at the 40. Pick up of about 16 on the play. Check that 20. That's one of the things Bobby Newcomb can do. He can scramble. Obviously, he can run the option. But when he drops back to pass here, what happens? He gets pressure. He doesn't see anybody down the field. So he just tucks the football and takes off. Maybe that'll be the play that gets this Nebraska offense going. Well, it's their longest of the game so far. Ball's on the 40. But again, that Rob Ryan led defense playing with a little bit of vim and vigor tonight. Tabor LeBlanc. The senior out of Edmond, Oklahoma, on the stop. And he and he's Joe consistency. He just plays good all the time. And you look at Nebraska's possessions in the first half. This is un-Nebraska-like, so oh. to speak. Ended up with just a field goal, but that's too many punts for Frank Solich. Hey, look how many plays, too. Seven, their longest drive. Loss of two on the play. Newcomb looks for Davison. Complete. At about the 47 yard line, Evan Howell was on the coverage. Matt Davison, part of a receiving core that receiving coach Ron Brown says a bunch of strange guys. Yeah. Well, everybody's got a different personality. And Davison became a hero last year when he caught the deflected pass against Missouri at the end of the game. So he's a guy that everybody in Nebraska knows. He's also the smallest wide receiver as we look at Ron Brown. Brown also says that Davison, he's a guy that looks like he's always chilling out. Nothing gets to this young man. Third and four now for Bobby Newcomb in Nebraska. And a timeout will be called by the Huskers. Frank Solich said to us last night he wanted to allow Bobby Newcomb to audible as much as possible. But what happens sometimes, you end up putting a little too much pressure on the quarterback. 48 yard line 12 43 left to play in the third and we are tied at three Shevin Wiggins wide to the right Billy Hafke wide to the left Evans the lone setback you can see Nebraska well below their season average on the option Evans got the block he needs and he has the first down lost the football but they're saying he was down Nebraska's coming out here and they want to spread out Oklahoma State. Tulsa did that against Oklahoma State and had great success. One of the ways you can get to the corner if you spread out the defense by the offensive formation, the quarterback has a better idea of where the defenders are. Look for that play to be repeated here a lot of times in the second half. Interesting formation for Nebraska. Little play action. Newcomb going down the middle. Jackson wide opens. Got it. It started with a crazy formation and it ends up with a big play that covered 40 yards. 
It's their stack eye formation. They have three guys lined up here. And Oklahoma State says it's going to be an option or it's going to be a run. But it ends up being a play pass, and it's a backside throw to Sheldon Jackson. Sheldon Jackson that time lined up as the right tight end. Excellent deception by Bobby Newcomb. Excellent ball handling. But I think a great call by the sidelines. I talked about that at the beginning. One of the things Nebraska had to do tonight was test the secondary of Oklahoma State because they put so many guys on the line of scrimmage. Now there was a holding penalty against Oklahoma State on that play. It was declined, so it's first and goal on the six. McAvilla and Miller in the backfield. Newcomb got some room. The modern quarterback, the quarterback of the 90s, is the quarterback that's mobile and a young man that can create plays. Bobby Newcomb took a negative play and turned it into a positive and turned it into a touchdown. The mobile quarterback, the guy that can get out of trouble, is the valuable quarterback in today's football. Chris Brown, this has been automatic in his career. Hasn't missed since 1996. And he stays true to form. Bobby Newcomb had the big game against Washington last week. He made something out of nothing again. Nebraska takes the opening kickoff in the second half, and they roll it in for their first seven of the evening. Five, that was almost double of their entire output of the first half. He goes in for the score, and Nebraska takes their first lead of the game at 10 to 3. Fobbs, Grissom, and White set to return the kick of Chris Brown. The first drive of the second half to me always sets the tempo for the entire second half. It'll be Reggie White at the 10. Gets up to about the 20 yard line and that's where Oklahoma State will take over. Keo Craver made the stop. Let's take a look at that touchdown and great job by the offensive line of Nebraska. But Bobby Newcomb does a good job of faking up inside, turning, bootlegging out after he sees pressure. He sees pressure, he feels it, he keeps his feet, but big old James Sherman right here, number 63, frees him with that wonderful block. If an offensive lineman stays on his block and keeps his feet moving, he usually wins. Bobby on the sideline, taking a little breather. Simmons and Aikens in the eye formation. Rivers in motion. Simmons bounces to the outside, takes a big hit, and he is swarmed over. Mike Brown, the junior out of Scottsdale, Arizona, second team all Big 12 last year, came up with a hit. Tony Ortiz also in on the action. An example of Nebraska's speed. Now watch Mike Brown, number 21, and watch all these white shirts get to there when the ball bounces outside to the left. This is what you call team defense. This is what you call swarming on defense. Oh, is that pretty? Loss of one. Lindsey slips right as he goes back, and I think he may have got his feet tangled up with Jeremy Offit. You talk about a momentum switcher. Nebraska came out and really flexed their muscles in that opening drive of quarter number three. You know, I think you're right. Jeremy Offutt and Tony Lindsay looked like they got their legs tangled up a little bit. And you can just feel the momentum here in Arrowhead Stadium go from disappointment from these Nebraska fans to excitement right now. This is third down and 14. If Nebraska stops them now, the momentum will be 100% wearing red. Lindsay pass batted down by Chad Kelsey. 
He had one knocked down last week against Washington, likewise tonight against Oklahoma State. And he also intercepted one last week against Washington. And Charlie McBride said when he knocked the first pass of the game down last week, it set the tempo for the Nebraska defense. And you know what? He did it again tonight. This is setting the tempo for this Nebraska defense here in the second half. Joe Walker standing at about his own 42 yard line ready to feel Scott Elder's punt. Nebraska should once again get great field position. A line driver. Walker runs over gets it at the 43. Cuts back. Uh -uh. 42 yards on the punt two on the return. Let's send it to college football Saturday studios with Kevin. That's a dandy going down there too. Big time, big game, a lot of excitement, but I doubt if it's any more exciting than it is here right now. Well, Eric Crouch has once again replaced Bobby Newcomb. He came in for a couple of plays early on. Newcomb after the touchdown run, sitting down. Crouch will run the option. Evans scampers to the outside, knocked out of bounds, not before he gets into Oklahoma State territory. Down to the 48-yard line, pickup of eight on the play, setting up a second and two. You know, I talked about it before, but Bobby Newcomb did not look like he was 100% when he was running around. The coaches said last night he was about 90%. I think to operate this option offense, though, your quarterback has got to be at top speed and full speed. Nebraska has won 44 straight in the month of October, trying to make it 45. We are inside of 10 minutes. Willie Miller, the fullback, for a couple of yards. Eric Clemens, I bet you the demeanor of Nebraska now has changed. We talk about that word mo, guys, momentum. While the Nebraska defense was making that last stand, there wasn't a soul on their bench sitting. Everybody standing with every play, the offense chomping at the bit to get back out there and put together another drive with Crouch at quarterback. We'll see what happens as the momentum has definitely switched to the Big Red, guys. Bobby Newcomb sits, Crouch with a stacked eye right behind him. 9.37 to play, the Huskers by seven. Crouch looking for his tight end again. Jackson's open again, he's got it! Jackson, the only receiver to catch a pass in each of Nebraska's games. Well, the big guy from Diamond Bar, California, he's lined up right here. He's going to run a little out pattern, but the backfield movement by Crouch and the ball handling and the faking ability of Crouch is what sets it up because what it does, it sucks up the secondary from Oklahoma State. Perfect timing and a perfect call. 30 yards on the pickup by Jackson. First and 10, ball on the 15. Nebraska knocking on the door again. Crouch to Evans. This time the orange jerseys led by Ricky Thompson smother him and Evans lost his helmet. We have a penalty. Just want to make sure the head didn't go with it. Makovica playing a peacemaker. Frankie London helping up D'Angelo Evans. Wonder if the phone's ringing and he's not sure if he should answer it right about now. You know, when Crouch is in the game, it looks like they're executing the beginning of the option so much quicker. Well, Oklahoma State again with another penalty. You know, one thing that people forget about this Nebraska offense, and D'Angelo Evans is fast. Believe me, he's fast. But Crouch was second in high school in the 100 meters in the state of Nebraska. His teammate, Erwin Sweeney, was first. So that is one fast quarterback. Personal foul, face back. To half the distance and an automatic first down. That's the fifth penalty against Oklahoma State, Nebraska, yet to commit one. It's a big penalty because they've got four shots to score a touchdown from six yards out. Four shots for an offense that rushes for over 300 a game. Crouch still gets the pitch off. D'Angelo Evans tries to get in. Touchdown, Nebraska, but we have a penalty flag, and that might be face mask again. I believe it was a face mask on Oklahoma State. J.B. Flowers was up the field. It looked like, it looked like his hand got caught in a face mask. I bet they decline it. I'll go out on a limb, Marty. <laughs> two possessions in the second half, two touchdowns for Nebraska. And 
and the officials are going to talk about it with 845 left to play in quarter number three. Huskers now on top 16 to three pending the extra point. We'll listen in. There was no touchdown on the play. There was a oh. knee down. It was a personal foul, face mask, the half the distance to the goal, and an automatic first down. Well, the line judge gave the touchdown signal. They're saying he had a knee down. Well, now they've got four shots to go one yard. Yeah. Now we saw that Kansas defense earlier today do a great job. Now you're going to see the face mask here as number 25, J.B. Flowers, reaches around and grabs Evans' face mask. That's a good call by the official right on top of the play. A little problem with the exchange. Crouch trying to get the meat hooks back on the football. We saw Kansas with a great goal line stand today against Texas A&M. Terry Allen's team came up on the short end of the stick, but boy, they played hard. But Nebraska is so strong in the red zone. How about 19 to 23 are touchdowns, and he's 101 tonight. And you know that you look at that, you say, okay, 23 times they've been in the red zone this year, but they've come away with 21 scores. That's absolutely fantastic. Makovica, Evans in the backfield. Evans dropped it right back into his hands, and he's got the touchdown. Merry Christmas, D'Angelo Evans. And that's the kind of bounce you usually get on an artificial surface. But when you do it on grass, the ball usually dies. It looked like a basketball dribble. Now watch Crouch come out on the corner here. He fakes to McAvicka. He pitches the ball, but Evans is not looking at it. It's Evans' fault. I thought the pitch was perfect. Evans did not expect the pitch to be that quick. And you know, when you have a different quarterback, sometimes the timing is a yep. little bit different. D'Angelo Evans, fourth touchdown of the year, rushing the football. And the Cornhuskers have hung a couple on Oklahoma State here in the second half. They lead 17 to 3, 743 left to play in quarter number three. What, what's got to happen here for Oklahoma State? And we talked about this as one of the keys to the game. They've got to stay in the game. Because so many times when you play Nebraska, you get behind by 10 or 14 points, then they overwhelm you. Bob Simmons has got a young football team. He's got a good football team. He's trying to raise the standard this year of their play. And by hanging in here and keep being competitive, he's raising the standard. And there's still a lot of time left in this football game. But next on College Football. The Fiziak, Tom Ramsey, ex-UCLA quarterback. They will do a great job tonight. But you know, I, there's not many night games up in Seattle. No. They usually play those games in the afternoon. Bob's Grissom and White once again set to return the Chris Brown kick. Very impressive for Nebraska here in the third quarter. After 43 total yards in the first half. Bob's five yards deep. Don't try it. 79,000 have come to Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City, Missouri for the first ever college football game in Arrowhead. And they're treated to a dandy first half. We were tied at three at intermission, but Nebraska comes up with two touchdowns of the second, along with Artie Gigantino and Eric Clemens. I'm Ron Thulin welcoming you as Nebraska leads 17 to three with 737 in quarter number three. There's 79,000 plus people here, but there were 125,000 oh. ticket requests for this football game. Hottest ticket in town, in case you just joined us. This is an Oklahoma State home game, but they got 25,000 fans. Nebraska brought 40 plus. Simmons and Aikens in the backfield. Lindsay will put it up. Another short hop intended for Brian Aikens. Is this the point where you totally change your game plan, or does Bob Simmons and Ron Calcagney look up and say, a lot of time, let's not lose our poise? I, I think you stay with your game plan. That time it was the unbalanced line. They just threw a pass off of it. I think you'll come back here now with the second play and the third play of this drive and try to pound it up inside because you don't want to get into a throwing contest if you're Oklahoma State against this fast Nebraska defense. Polk 
the sophomore out of Rockford, Illinois, is the one who had the penetration on Lindsay. The defensive line from Nebraska is starting to come alive. Jason Wilt, Mike Rucker, really trying to get up the field and get after Tony Lindsay before he can get going. I really love these defensive tackles from the bat Nebraska. They're big, they're strong, they're mobile, and they're agile. Third down and 10, Sean Love and Willie Grissom check into the game. Charlie McBride doesn't want his kids thinking too much on defense for Nebraska. Haven't had to do it here in the second half. Lindsey looking in the flat. Pass is almost intercepted, intended for Willie Grissom. Ralph Brown, the 5'10 junior out of Hacienda Heights, California. The career leader in passes knocked down. And he's, and been, he's been a little quiet today, but one of the reasons is Oklahoma State is not throwing the football. He comes from one of the best high school programs in the United States at Bishop Amat out in Los Angeles. He has started every game in a Nebraska uniform. That's quite an accomplishment. That is big. Elder standing at about his six. Nebraska will let him kick it away, and it's a high one. Walker. As soon as he gets it, he catches it, he's hit, and the flag is thrown. The old halo penalty. Oklahoma State can't believe it. 47 yards on the kick. Ethan Howell is the one who is going to be flagged. You have to give the punt returner six feet or two yards to catch the football. That time, Howell violated that. Oklahoma State still with all the penalties. Nebraska yet to commit one. And they have been costly. You're going to see it again. Now watch Walker catch the ball, but see how he's too close. He can't do that. you got to give him two yards, six feet to catch the football. And I think that's a great rule because Violation of safety. Of a two-yard halo. It'll be a five-yard penalty. First down. I agree because you can really get hurt. You can knock somebody's chin right up through their forehead if you so, don't be careful. See, when I was playing, they didn't have that rule. And that's why I <laughs> that's volunteered yeah, not to be a punt returner anymore. <laughs> okay. That's why you keep falling off your stool. Yeah. Time. Okay. Interesting formation again for the Huskers. Newcomb back in at quarterback, and he's going to keep it. Gives it up to Wiggins. So Shevin Wiggins moving in the backfield to have his carry. I think Shevin Wiggins has really exceeded expectations, and so has Nebraska here in the second half, below expectations in the first half. Well, uh, as it says, they have woken up, so to speak. They 43 yards total offense in the first half, 134 here in the third quarter alone, and there's over six minutes left in the third quarter. Second down and eight. Correll Buckhalder now in the backfield for the Cornhuskers. Newcomb at quarterback, and he's going to put it up. He's looking deep. And that was closer to Rob Ryan than anybody. Let's send it to our College Football Saturday studios. Kevin Frazier with a Dr. Pepper game break. Great game between Arkansas and Kentucky midway through the fourth quarter. Clint Sterner finds a wide open Hubert Laddermill. It's a seven-point lead for Arkansas. Tim Couch, 300 yards and three TDs on the day for Kentucky. How about the job Houston Nuts done at Arkansas? Well, what about the guys at Kentucky? That is no longer just a no. basketball score. Again, they come in and they throw the football, and it's an equalizer. On third and eight, Frankie London wide to the right. Here comes the pressure. Newcomb scampers out of it. He'll be about two yards short of the first down. Trent Alexander, the senior out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, is the one who tripped him up. Alexander's dad is a coach over at Langston University in Oklahoma. This is a classic tackle by Trent Alexander. Well, he's a coach's son, so he's been schooled very well. But number 10, you see him come into your screen, makes a wonderful open field tackle. He did not lose his footing, and he kept his head up. Put that one on a highlight reel. Hey, here's a guy that was a two-sport guy at Oklahoma State. He was a rodeo guy, the Oklahoma State rodeo team. Though Bob Simmons said, uh-uh. You know what his nickname is? Cowboy. Cowboy. Oklahoma State almost went after it. Richardson at the 17, make it the 18, and that's where Oklahoma State will take over after the 35-yard kick. 5-35, left to play in quarter number three. The Huskers by a couple of touchdowns. 
five left to play in quarter number three. Whammy. Thanksgiving Day 1971. First quarter, top ranked Nebraska meets number two Oklahoma. The Huskers' Johnny Rogers returns this Sooner punt 72 yards for the first touchdown of the game. Nebraska fell behind later in the contest, but rallied to defeat Oklahoma 35 31 in the game of the century. Rogers went on to win the Heisman Trophy the following year. That's the American Century play of the century. Talk to OU fans, they say there was a clip on that play. And to this day, they will say there was a clip on that play. Oklahoma State first and 10, straight up the middle. Jamal Fobbs jumping over the white jerseys and Joe Walker finally hog ties him down at about the 30 yard line. Kevin Brown a fullback good block. It's a great view here now watch Fobbs he's going to come up in here but again it's a nice job of blocking by the big guys up front. It's a zone play but look at that right there. Two guys from the defensive line from Nebraska just get buckled and knocked down. This is what Oklahoma State did so well in the first half. Fobbs again. And we have a penalty thrown in the secondary of Nebraska. And Nebraska's walking away from the official. Let's see if it'll go. Looks like it's against Oklahoma State again. personal foul against Oklahoma State. We have an update on an injury for Nebraska. Here's Eric Clemens. All right, guys. Receiver Kenny Cheatham is here in spirit. Of course, his team now has the offensive momentum. They're doing it without him. He separated his left shoulder early in the first half, and of course, he is out for the game on the bench right now with a sling, and he appears to be in a lot of pain. Guys? Well, that's a big loss for Frank Solich, and Oklahoma State walking backwards again. You've got to keep your cool in these situations exactly. and Bob Simmons obviously doesn't like it But you have to keep your poise you have to keep your cool because what this does this just damages Oklahoma State's field position and they were moving Sean Love wide to the right Fobbs and Brown in the backfield Fobbs has some running room Almost getting back to the original line of scrimmage makes his way up to the 30 yard line maybe the 31 Pickup of about 11 on the play. That's a good play call again by Ron Calcagni because Nebraska is expecting a pass. Their defensive linemen are in a pass rush mentality. They rush up the field, not worrying about the run. And when you do that, you create natural scenes. Still third down and long. We'll call it 12. Intercepted. Penalty flag is thrown. Jay Foreman. And I think it's going to go against Nebraska. And it may be all for naught. Jason Wiltz. Came up with the interception, his third of the season. Jay Foreman got the lateral. Now they're walking back. It looks like a late hit on the quarterback, Tony Lindsay. Eric Johnson might have hit him a little too late. Personal foul. Roughing the pass on the defense. It'll be a 15 yard penalty. You're going to see Eric Johnson right here. He's going to come across the line of scrimmage. Lindsey gets the ball, drops back the pass. Johnson does a good job of avoiding the block, but he's a little bit too late. He's got to pull himself up under control. But how about that defensive line for Nebraska already? They're leading the team in interceptions yeah, now. That, that would have been Wiltz's third, and then you throw in Kelsey's last week. So that would have been the defensive line's fourth <laughs> interception this season. Charlie McBride's doing a great yeah. job of teaching ball skills to the defensive lineman. Now Marcellus Rivers, the tight end, is split wide to the left. Cowboys keep it on the ground. They try that left side with Jamal Fobbs. Jay Foreman coming up to make the stop. Oklahoma State here is slowing the tempo of the game down now to try to regain their composure, but also regain control of the game tempo and the clock. 
only down by 14. Their defense has played well, but Nebraska has stung the Cowboys in the second half. Oklahoma State a victim of their own mistakes at times, the penalties. Lindsey, the quarterback, fobs in the backfield. They go the other way with it. Running room. Garrett Staggs, the tight end, down to the 15 to the 13 yard line. Jay Foreman finally bringing him down. Okay, now this is an unusual formation. Watch what happens here. Garrett Steggs lines up here. It's an unbalanced line on this side. Now watch Lindsey. He's going to go out. Steggs sneaks out of the backfield. Excuse me, out of the line of scrimmage. Wonderful, wonderful downfield block by Jeremy Offcott. Excuse me, it wasn't Offcott. It was Adam Davis, number 78. That's a well-executed play, but they lined up in an unbalanced formation and threw Nebraska off a little bit. Fobbs straight up the middle, still on his feet, down to the five. Erwin Sweeney and Mike Brown finally bring it around Fobbs, and we've seen the styles with Simmons and Fobbs. Well, one of the ways you beat Nebraska, you pound them and you pound them, but you also try to make some big plays at opportune times, and that screenplay that time was a huge play at a very opportune time. Pickup of seven, it's second and three from the six, so the Cowboys can get a first down, and they're knocking on the Husker door. Rivers, the tight end, wide to the right, eye formation again. Fobbs, following behind the big right side of the line of Arceo and Lynn, Jason Wiltz, the defensive tackle on the stop. And they're going to unpile the orange and the white. See where they spot it. You know, about one-third of the game tonight, Oklahoma State has come out and lined up in some type of unbalanced line. It puts a lot of pressure on a defense, number one, to know who's eligible, but number two, to get lined up to that stuff. Oklahoma State had a bye last week, and that's one of the things they worked on, unbalanced lines. First and goal for the Cowboys. The ball is on the three. Touchdown is fourth of the year, and the Cowboys have pulled within eight. Good looking drive that time by Oklahoma State. Puts him right back in the middle of this football game. Sitting this for the extra point. He has hit 38 of his last 39. Shot one more up. Good old-fashioned football. Now look what happens here. It's an unbalanced line. They've got too many guys over here and a wide receiver out here. They've only got two guys on that side of the line of scrimmage. Nebraska doesn't adjust. They have two people out here. They get outmanned at the point of attack on the left side of the Oklahoma State offensive formation. Good coaching, and there wasn't enough defenders to stop a simple handoff. And these two have been quite successful. 120 yards still with a quarter, plus 213 to play. They're averaging just over 149 a game between the two. They're coming off a couple of 100-yard games against Mississippi State. When I was a defensive coordinator, unbalanced lines used to drive me nuts because sometimes the guy on the end is a tackle. He's not eligible. Sometimes he's a tight end. He is eligible. And what it does, it really, really puts a lot of mental pressure on your run support. You see Bob Simmons talking to Coach Ryan, Rob Ryan there, and he's pops saying to him, hey, we got to stop him here right. because I have a good feel for what's going on on offense. But Coach Ryan, you got to stop him. <laughs> Easier said than done. Well, Pistol Pete hasn't gotten the big hit over this yet, but they are within seven. That's a good line. <laughs> I've used it before, I think. Yeah, I think you have, too. Number two team in the country. A high kick. It is Walker. Good hit. Up to about the 24-yard line. And that's where the Huskers will take over with 2.05 left in the third. 
Well, it's hardcore football at Fox Sport. Check your local listings. We have 205 left. The number two ranked Huskers leading the Cowboys of Oklahoma State 17 to 10. Newcomb keeps it. Little slight of hand. Scampers out of bounds, but not before he got the first down, or he will be awfully close to it. The officials marking it right on the spot. I think that should be enough. You know, Newcomb dreamed of making the pitches to D'Angelo Evans. He said, when I was a young player, as we look at Ron Brown, the wide receivers coach, but he said, I always wanted to pitch to this guy. And last week when he got his first opportunity, he took advantage of it. But what of a lethal combination, Newcomb and Evans. Oklahoma State's defense led by Raymond Cato stopping Evans. You can hear the pads popping oh, up here. Yeah. This guy, Bob Simmons, has done a great job of making his defensive football team and his running game extremely physical. He was not happy three weeks ago when they lost to Tulsa, and they basically went back to fundamental football, and I think you're seeing it here tonight. Oklahoma State jumping all over the place on defense. Pass is going to be incomplete, intended for Matt Davison. Here is Rob Ryan, brother Rex Ryan. Tough one today against Colorado as Oklahoma lost. He's the defensive coordinator for the Sooners. And Buddy Ryan's his dad. And Buddy Ryan, as we most of us know, was the architect of the famous 46 defense in the National Football League, which was highlighted by the 1985 Chicago Bears, who won the Super Bowl. Now, Oklahoma State plays a variation of the 46 defense. I think what Buddy used to use was perfect for pro football. You got to tweak it a little bit to use it in college. Third down and eight. Davison wide to the right, trying to get free. Goes out in the flat. He's got the ball. First down, Nebraska. Powell looked like he went for the interception. Are you going to see Davison come down the field? Number 28 is Evan Howe. He's going to run down the field. He's going to make a move to the inside. He fights outside, but Howe grabs him. That could have been pass interference on Oklahoma State. But it's determination that time by Matt Davison of continuing to fight to get free. And you know what? That's very impressive for a little guy. He's only 5'11", 175, 180 pounds. From Tecumseh, Nebraska. He is a sophomore. Coaches say we wish we could put more weight on him. They can't get him to gain weight. He's a very lean guy, but he's a tough cookie. Hey, it's hard for wide receivers to put on weight because they're running all the time. First and 10, ball on the 49. Audible at the line of scrimmage. Inside of Oklahoma State territory. The pitch back to Evans. The Sooners stringing it out, but not before Evans picks up three. Trent Alexander going underneath the pile to make the stop. Alexander came to Oklahoma State as a quarterback, switched to defense right off the bat. <laughs> Working on Evan Howe. The trainers of Oklahoma State are. Howe, the defensive back. Second down and four, ball sits on the 45. Final 40 seconds of quarter number three. Complete. Kenyatta Wright doing a nice job coming from that middle linebacker spot to put the whoop on Wiggins. And he is short of the first down. Boy, Wright had to run a long way, Artie. Wright is six foot one, 235 pounds. He wants to be a coach. He's an intense football player that controls this Oklahoma State defense. He makes all the checks. Now you're going to see some substitution here from Nebraska, and maybe, maybe we're going to get a little bit more of a spread out formation than we've been seeing. And that's the end of the third quarter. Nebraska facing third down and two. We'll switch sides, but Bobby Newcomb started the scoring on the first drive of the third quarter, and his Huskers hold his seven point advantage with 15 minutes to go. Oklahoma State with 15 minutes to play, along with Artie Gigantino and Eric Clemens, I'm Ron Thulin. Third down for Bobby Newcomb, scrambling, throws it away, incomplete. Courtney Mallory 
he had the pressure on and Frank Solich's play did not work. Now he has a decision to make. Excellent poise again by Bobby Newcomb of staying in the pocket under duress and under a blitzing Oklahoma State defense. Now facing fourth down. They call it two. They're going to punt it away. At least it appears. Willie Miller is the up back. Bill LaFleur set to kick it away. Standing on his own 45 yard line. That might get into the end zone, and it does. So Oklahoma State, a nice job defensively, and they're right back in this thing. 41 yards on the kick. If you would have asked Bob Simmons to say, hey, would you be happy with a 17 to 10 game in the fourth quarter, he would have said yes. Now, going back to our scouting report at the beginning of the game, we said Oklahoma State had to run the ball inside. They have been. To avoid negative plays on offense, I believe they have, but they've been penalized too many times, which has hurt their, their field position. They have forced negative plays against Nebraska's offense, and they have not been discouraged. So I think our scouting report yep. so far has been right on. You nailed it. Keeping his feet is Nathan Simmons, a very thick running back, very deceptive with his speed. You know, they call him a slasher. He looks more like a bull to me. I, I, I agree you with know, you. The coaches described him as a little bit of a slasher. He's a big slasher to me, <laughs> if he is. Oklahoma, or Nebraska, has not lost to an unranked opponent since 1992. Only one time that has happened. That was Texas. In the 96 Big 12 championship game. Second and five. Simmons again fighting his way nearing the 30 yard line. How about the Nebraska scouting report for Frank Solich? Well, we said they had to contain Lindsay, and so far they have. They did not do a very good job in the first half of blocking the multiple fronts of Oklahoma State. They started in the third quarter to test the secondary, and they had some success, and they have not dominated the kicking game. So, again, I think we were right on, but number three to me is the big one. They've loosened up the Oklahoma mm -hmm. State defense by testing the secondary and throwing the ball deep. Brown and Simmons in the backfield, third down and two. Simmons crosses the 30 to the 31. That'll be good for a first down. That's good, tough running that time by a young man who wants and has the desire to get the first down. That's called the back making it with some assistance, but a lot of it on his own and sheer determination. Ethan Howell comes into the lineup along with Marcellus Rivers, a tight end for Oklahoma State. First and 10 on the 31. We've had a couple of momentum switchers. Nebraska took control of the game in the third, but Oklahoma State has clawed their way back. To the fullback. Brown may have gotten one. Kevin Frazier in our studios with a Dr. Pepper game break. Guys, great game between Georgia and LSU. True freshman Quincy Carter playing like a veteran for the Bulldogs. He finds Tony Small and watch this catch. Tasty. Georgia up 28-21 in the third quarter. Artie, Georgia's for real. Jim Donnan's for real. He was oh, yeah. the head coach at Marshall, and he's done a wonderful job, and I think a pressure cooker down in Athens, Georgia. Second and eight. Howell wide to the right, eye formation again for the Cowboys. Right down the middle, looking for Howell. He flanks off to the side. He's got it! Goodbye! have stung the number two team in the country. Oh, my.
It can happen in a hurry. When you oh. make big plays, and you, that was a wonderful example of it. Alupka, the holder, Sidness for the extra point to tie it up. Twelve oh eight to play in a ball game. The Oklahoma State Cowboys. Ethan Howe from Tony Lindsay, and we are tied. play it's a great execution this time by Oklahoma State how comes across in motion and you're gonna see Nebraska's playing man-to-man -man back there Walker number 25 is communicating with his fellow teammates you're gonna see how come back into the screen here and run a post and out pattern now Walker picks him up man-to-man -man. how looks him inside and he just beats Walker to the outside he had a step all the way that time on safety Joe Walker and Joe Walker's got the kickoff. Slips and falls as he crosses the 15. The twin brother, Ethan Howe. He's a track guy, and Ron Calcagney told us that this walk-on was starting to really come on this year. And he's explaining it one more time. You know, you always like explaining to your teammates what <laughs> happened on the sidelines after you do something good. And you know, you embellish it a little bit oh. until everybody sees the video on Monday. And then they learn the truth. Oh, but you cannot celebrate against these Cornhuskers too early. The stacked eye again. Newcomb keeps it, hops over one orange jersey, stacked up at the 25. Trent Alexander, the steer roper, rope Newcomb. Barrett Clemens, what do you have for us? Well, this Oklahoma State bench is still celebrating that last 67-yard touchdown pass, guys. And isn't that ironic, here in the second half, each of the four scoring drives we've seen all contain big plays in the passing game for these two run-oriented teams. It's a great one, guys. What happens when defenses are expecting the run they put nine or ten guys around the line of scrimmage yep. and obviously you leave some defensive back on an island by himself it's tough to cover a guy all over the field man to man two full backs and Evans Newcomb broken play Good play again that time by Raymond Cato coming off the corner. It's aggression, though, by Oklahoma State. Bunch of guys up the field and around the ball carrier. And here's Rob Ryan, the defensive corner. Yes! <laughs> I called the right one. Let's get another one now. Well, he said he talked to his brother Rex, talked to his dad, Buddy, about the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Yeah, but you know what? They can't call the defenses for him right. in the heat of battle. Nukamani option, the pitch. Evans dropped it. We've got a ball loose, but it goes out of bounds, and Nebraska retains possession. And Nebraska's lucky because if Oklahoma State would have recovered it, it looks like they did get it. Oh, they did get it. No, I think it's fourth down. Oh, it's, it's fourth, fourth down. down. Excuse me. Uh, nobody had possession of that ball. But what happens? Newcomb gets on the corner. He pitches the ball, and Evans looks like he's not ready again for the football. And a bunch of orange jerseys scramble around it and knock it out of bounds. Good call that time by the official, but Nebraska's lucky. Took his eyes off the ball. Oklahoma State 10 on the line of scrimmage, but they don't come after him. Great punt. Good hang time. At the 30, it is Richardson. Up to the 38-yard line in Oklahoma State with 9.43 to play. We'll have the football tied at 17. 52 yards on the kick. No touch the dial yet. Plenty of time left, but the last time Oklahoma State beat the Nebraska Cornhuskers, 1961. They beat them the first two times in this series. How about JFK was president? Roger Maris was hitting the bunch. And Ernie Davis was on his way to winning the Heisman. And Frank Solich was 17. Oh, what a hit by the Husker defense. Chad Kelsey lowering the boom on Fobbs. Chad Kelsey, the team captain, 
He is a leader by example. He goes 100 miles an hour. He's an example of a full speed football player. He was the 1998 Nebraska lifter of the year. He will be a first round draft choice in the National Football League. This guy is the kind of guy that shows you the way you should play defensive football. On second and 11. Lindsay is going to be sacked by Erwin Sweeney. Kelsey again with the penetration, but the sack will go to Sweeney, his first of the year. Good call that time by Charlie McBride. Now what he's going to do, he's going to bring Sweeney off the corner and Kelsey up in here. It's like a corner blitz. You can see the linebackers are up tight from Nebraska. Chelsea gets dropped, he gets knocked down, but Sweeney comes clean. That's really a good design by Charlie McBride. Anytime on a blitz you have a guy come clean, it's good design. Third and 22 for Tony Lindsay. They'll keep it on the ground and play it safe. Up to the 30-yard line, Mike Brown stopping Jamal Fobbs, and the Cowboys will be forced to kick it away. Avoid negative plays on offense. Oh. Oklahoma State, one of the keys to this game. They did not do it that time on that drive. Frank Solich has got to be delighted with the play of his defense, except for one or two plays tonight. Elder standing at his 16, Joe Walker, at his own 30 for Nebraska. A low spiral walker at the 27. Up the middle, look out. One man to beat. Touchdown, Nebraska. Nebraska's got one of the best, most balanced kicking games, not only on their coverage units, but on their returns and their kicking in the United States. And that's an example why earlier in the year, Walker returned a kickoff return for a touchdown. I talked about Nebraska having to dominate the kicking game. Well, they might have just won this game with the kicking game. Walker once again. Nebraska leads. Fans or Oklahoma State fans. Brant Wade was injured on that extra point. He made it off to the sideline under his own power. And with 729 to play at Arrowhead Stadium, 79,555. See Nebraska leading. Big plays in the kicking game change the momentum of football games. from inside the goal line. In a pack of white jerseys, crosses the 20 up to the 22, and that's where Oklahoma State will take over. The touchdown once again by Walker. When you make long returns like Walker's gonna do here, you gotta have help. Watch this guy right here, Troy Watchburn, come across number 42 and make a great block. He springs Walker on the touchdown. Blocking downfield is very difficult, and it's so beautiful when you see a great block spring a return guy. Walker, who was burned on the 67-yard touchdown pass from Lindsey to Howell, redeems himself. Akins and Simmons in the backfield. Simmons bounces to the outside, picking up five, maybe six yards on the play. Plenty of time left, over seven minutes. I was just gonna say that, Ron. Oklahoma State has got to be patient in their play calling. You know, you got to almost look up there and say it's a 0-0 game if you're Bob Simmons. Be smart, be patient, and just go about your business and don't panic and think you have to rush it in order to score. Charlie McBride's defense facing the biggest challenge of the evening. Second and three, Brian Aikens, the fullback. 
Probably be about a half a yard short of the first down, maybe the length of the football. And this is obviously the closest game of the year oh. for Nebraska because the first game against Louisiana Tech was a blowout. So was the University of Alabama at Birmingham. Cal was basically a blowout, and Washington last week was. Nebraska had 43 yards in the first half. They're still down 50, but the important number is they're up seven on the scoreboard. Doesn't get any easier for Oklahoma State. They've got to go to Texas Tech and then to Kansas State. That is a first down, by the way. What a schedule for the Cowboys, but they're laying it all on the line tonight. Tony Lindsay's done a nice job. Yeah, a three-week stretch of undefeated teams. Oh, that's 12-0, and, and Bob Simmons knows it. And that's one of the reasons two weeks ago after that Tulsa game, he said, we've got to go back to fundamentals and techniques and regain some of the toughness in this Cowboy program. Penalty flag, another one against the Cowboys. If this is another motion call on the Cowboys. Dead ball. Ball starting right. offense. This five yard comes in the ninth. What is that? Four First down. down. Four, yeah, four. Three or four. Now well, we mentioned Bob Simmons' schedule doesn't get any easier. They're 0-14 versus Nebraska Tech and Kansas State in the 90s. And all three of them are basically away games. Yeah. This one is, too. In fact, the first five out of six games this year for Oklahoma State was away from Stillwater. First and 15. Simmons stays on his feet. Gets up to the 40-yard line before Chad Kelsey comes up to make the stop. The mark of an outstanding back is not a guy who can run through a hole. It's a guy who can make a defender miss, but also run through tackles. And I've been fortunate enough to be around Eric Dickerson and Marcus Allen and Charlie White, some great running backs, but all those guys had the quality that this guy has. He not only can make you miss, but he can run through a tackler. Two yards away from gaining 100 against Nebraska. And he is close to the first down. So facing first and 15, they get the 12-yard gain for Simmons. May have gotten about two and a half more. So they got right back on schedule. And I think the official is going to give him the first down, and he does. And it's all because of Nathan Simmons, a young man that set a record for taking the most hours his freshman year, 40-plus in a psychology major. From Boulder High School in Boulder, Colorado, obviously went to high school there while his dad was coaching at the University of Colorado. From the 43, Simmons again. Gets up to about the 45. Pick up of two on the play. Second down and eight. Jason Wiltz on to stop the senior out of New Orleans. Frank Solich getting tested this evening. I like Frank Solich. I think he's going to do a wonderful job at Nebraska. He's open. He's honest. He's egoless. He's intense. He's a guy that was handpicked by Tom Osborne. He is part of Nebraska tradition. Two wide receivers to the left. Three-step drop to Grissom. Didn't fool anybody in a white jersey. Sweeney was there. Brown was there. Boy, Nebraska sniffed that out from the get-go. Sweeney shows his great speed on that. He sees it coming, and watch what he does. He's standing right here. He's going to backpedal a little bit, but then come up and make the play on the quick throw-out screen. You can't read it or time it, and it's a good safe play, but it's not a good safe play when you got a guy like Sweeney who's standing there and can diagnose it and make the play. This is the play of the game. Third down and 10 inside of four minutes. Lindsey looking for love. Is it intercepted? No, incomplete. Foreman thought he had it. He short hopped it. Bob Simmons now makes a decision with 347 to play. Artie, do you go for it on fourth down and 10? Well, the first thing I would do is call timeout and talk about it. You know, I. I think he's going to punt, and it's probably the right decision here because your defense is playing so well. And I don't think, Ron, it would be another fake because Nebraska is going to be in a safe punt return. In other words, they're going to be looking for the fake. 
Now Trent Alexander is the up man. Elder's been busy. Nebraska almost blocks it. A good high kick. Penalty flag is thrown from three different angles. The first back judge that was standing right next to Wiggins didn't throw it, but then it came from the line, and Bob Simmons does not like the call. I, I look like Wiggins called for a fair catch. I, because I thought he did, too. What you want if you're the Nebraska coaches, you don't want them fielding the ball or taking the chance of returning the ball and then fumbling it. So if you're going to field it, call for the fair catch, and I believe that's what the penalty is going to be. Of the two yard halo by the kicking team, it'll be a first down. Well, I guess he didn't call for a fair catch, but no, it's the I old guess he didn't. Hey, halo rule again. Howell, that's a second one. He didn't care, call for the fair catch. Yeah, we'll see Wiggins. He should have, though. And again, it is a violation of the halo rule. Yeah, Howell did try to hold up. Nevertheless, Nebraska. On the offensive attack with three and a half to play. The most impressive thing about the defensive front of Oklahoma State and Andre Waddle that time showed that is they had the ability to come off of blocks and make the play on the ball carrier. As Evans came back, Waddle was standing in the hole waiting for him. The clock ticks away. You know, you watch video and Waddle shows up. He, he says he lives for big games. Well, he's living good because he plays well in big games. Loss of two, second and 12. Davison in motion. Newcomb swings it out to Evans. He is ushered out of bounds abruptly by Terrell Knowles, the junior out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. He is big, he's strong, and he's fast. And Nebraska facing third down. And we'll see where they mark it. This is a difficult call for Frank Solich to quote offensive coordinator, head coach of Nebraska, because you want to be smart, but you want to pass the ball so you can get a first yep. down, but you also don't want to put yourself in danger of maybe getting sacked or getting the ball disrupted and maybe intercepted or knocked loose. Third and six, Davison and Wiggins to the left. Two tight ends. Oklahoma State comes with a blitz. Lindsey fumbles! And I think Sherman recovered it for Nebraska. James Sherman, Johnny on the spot. That's exactly what I was talking about. When you have a potential pass play, the chance of the ball getting knocked loose or intercepted is there, especially against the pressure defense. And you know Frank Solich's heart was in his throat <laughs> just then. So was Bobby Newcomb's, and Oklahoma State has called a timeout. Eating fourth down and eight with two and a half to play in our GTE. Scholar Athlete of the Week is Joel Makovic of Nebraska, a 3.82 GPA in biological science. He is a first-team academic All-American, wants to be a doctor, already taken the med school exam. He epitomizes the blue-collar football player, a tough guy that tries real hard. Richardson set to receive the kick. It's a spiral at the 33. Stacked up at the 40, a 43-yard kick, eight on the return. Eric Clemens, you've got a lot to recap in our Burger King game summary. I certainly do. Five second half touchdowns between these two teams. Look at Nathan Simmons, over 100 yards against that stout Nebraska defense. Nebraska's offense averaging 303 yards plus, only 73 tonight. Joe Walker so far has a play of the game with that 73-yard punt return. Second time this crew, guys, has seen him return a kick for a touchdown this year. Nobody is sitting at Arrowhead. Simmons straight up the middle with 2.15 to play, trailing by seven. Somewhere in this drive, when no one expects it, look for some type of play action pass. A fake into the line of scrimmage, and then Oklahoma State may be going deep. We were tied at three in intermission. And Nebraska came out, scored on their first two possessions of the second half. There's no huddle here now by Oklahoma State. Plenty of time to snap it. 1.45 to play. 
Lindsay passes complete to Love. He's got some running room down to the 30, down to the 27 yard line. Tony Ortiz is the one who made the stop. Great rack that time by Love. Run after the catch. He avoids a tackler and gets the ball up the field. That was the kind of play, that's the kind of play that can really put some pressure now on this Nebraska defense because they're in great shape to try to get a touchdown. 21 on the pickup, a minute and 35 to play. And Oklahoma State will call a timeout, I believe. Charlie McBride looking at his defense. One of the things that happens when you play a lot of man-to-man -man coverage like Nebraska does, if you miss a tackle on a receiver, there's not a lot of people behind you to help you make the tackle. Oklahoma State wants to talk about it with 1.17 to play. They trail by a touchdown. It's second down and eight. Oklahoma State has to cover 25 yards, second down and eight. 117 to play. Lindsay, a little shuttle pass right up the middle to Simmons. Gets up to the 20. That's a safe play because if he drops it, it's an incomplete pass. If he catches it, yeah. he's got a chance to make a good play or positive yard. So that's a good call that time by the Oklahoma State coaching staff. Oklahoma State has one timeout left coming up. We send you to the Pac-10, Arizona and Washington. Steve Fiziak, Tom Ramsey, Paul Sunderland standing by, but we still have 45 left. Lindsay over the middle, passes incomplete. Intended for the redshirt freshman Marcellus Rivers. Broken up by Mike Brown. Really good defense that time by Mike Brown. He's supposedly, arguably, by the coaches, the best tackler on this football team, but he also showed some skill there at knocking a pass down. Fourth down and two to go, 35 seconds to play. Big play here for Tony Lindsay and Bob Simmons. Tonight, 101 for the season, four of five. What would you call here, Ron? I'd go for the first down. A, a run? Akins and Simmons. I'd give it to Simmons. Lindsay fakes the pitch, keeps it. Got the first down up to the 16 and ushered back. But that'll stop the clock with 26 seconds to play. They were going for the score on that. I it agree. It was a play action pass. It was going to be a deep pass down the field. Now they want Lindsay just to down the ball. The clock has not started yet. just throw it into the turf and with 23 seconds left he'll take a look over to Ron Calcagni Bob Simmons and the coaching crew they've got plenty of time though they've got one timeout left Nebraska has got two left they obviously won't use them but the key here is to get the correct play called and make sure Tony Lindsay and everybody on offense communicates so they can execute the play now for Frank Solich and Charlie McBride, the defensive coordinator, you want to make sure you're lined up properly and aware of the clock. Akins and Simmons in the backfield, Terrence Richardson in the slot. Lindsay straight drop, pressure, dumps it off, pass is complete to Ethan Howe, and he'll step out of bounds with 17 to play. Excellent poise again by the young sophomore, Tony Lindsay, in the pocket, did not see his receiver down the field open, so he decided to look to his secondary receiver. Excellent, excellent poise. He plays beyond his years in terms of experience. Ball is on the 12. This is what college football is all about. Situations like this and crowds like this. Third down and five. complete intended for Simmons 
Fourth down and five. 14 seconds left. Now that was close to being a fumble because that's a new rule this year in yep. college football. If the ball is thrown laterally, it's treated like a fumble. That is a new rule in the NC2A this year. We saw them convert on one fourth down. And Lindsay's going to burn the final timeout. You almost have to. You can't take the timeouts back to Stillwater. But as I said before, you want to be sure exactly what you're doing and make sure everybody on the offensive unit has an understanding of what play you'd like to run. Just a reminder, coming up next, we still have more football coming up on Fox Sports Net, number 14, Arizona, versus number 20, Washington, as Washington tries to redeem themselves. Steve Fiziak and company standing by. And Arizona coach Dick Toomey, who's a friend of mine, I think is one of the real gentlemen in this game of college football. And on the other side of the field, Jim Lambright, I think, has done an outstanding job at Washington when he took over for Don James. You know, we talk about the pressure on Oklahoma State, but the pressure's also on Nebraska right about now. Yeah, and that guy, because he followed a legend in Tom Osborne. Frank Solich has made this transition from assistant head football coach to head football coach at Nebraska very smooth. In fact, he tells a funny story how in July of 1997, Tom Osborne nonchalantly walked into his office and said he was going to retire. You were going to become, Frank was, the new head football coach. Tom decided how to make a decision when to tell the world, either then or after the season. Frank Solich had to live with that secret for six months. Now let's see what Oklahoma State is going to go with. Sean Love is checked in as a wide receiver. They've got a couple of tight ends. Brian Akins is in the backfield. All the receivers have got to know where the first down marker is. They need five. Lindsey buying some time. Complete to Love! And they'll stop the clock with eight seconds left, and he went out of bounds at about the one. <laughs> Oklahoma State is out of timeouts. They're going to have to spike it, but it is a first down. The clock has started. Lindsey with one play left. Oh, my. Hold on to your seats. And Bob Simmons checking with his coaching staff. But what a pressure pass by the sophomore, Tony Lindsay. And his mobility allows him to get out on the corner, and Sean Love fights to get free. Excellent throw that time by Lindsay, and a great job by Love of catching the ball, but also getting free. Now, what has got to happen here is both coaching staffs have got to be thinking a play ahead. If Oklahoma State does score, do you go for two. They only have three seconds to snap the ball for the win. No, Nebraska stuffs them. Simmons right up the middle. They had a hustle to snap. The play clock was down to one when Lindsey snapped it. But you got to give credit to that Nebraska defense. Give the credit to Nebraska's defense for stuffing them. But it was the right call because Simmons has had a great day. He ran behind the strength of his offensive line, the left side. But Nebraska was sitting in the hole waiting for it. What a great, great football game. 79,555 were treated to a dandy. Oklahoma State on the one yard line as time was running out. A chance to tie it up with the number two team in the country. And the Nebraska defense steps up in a big way to stop Nathan Simmons. 
Well, here's the play again. You're going to see it's a zone play. Hands off to Simmons on the left side of the offensive line. Great penetration that time by the defensive front of Nebraska, and Mike Rucker makes the big play. And usually a non-emotional Frankie Solid says, we got it. The game is over. And on the other side, the father of the man who carried the football. Bob Simmons has been in some tough games. He lost two games last year to Texas A&M and Missouri in overtime. Back to back. But the 25,000 faithful of Oklahoma State had a lot to cheer about tonight. Their team didn't leave anything in the chamber, but Oklahoma State drops a tough one to the number two team in the country, the final 24-17. Now let's send it to our college football Saturday studio with Kevin Frazier.